Never Stir in the Magic Pebble. This story is about a young guy who finds a pebble and he realizes it's a magic pebble. He lives at home with his parents and he's out looking for unusual rocks, his hobby. He finds this red shiny pebble and wishes the rain would stop, it stops. He puts it back on the ground and wishes the rain would start, it doesn't. He picks it up, wishes the rain would start again and the lightning comes, the rain comes. He realizes this is a magic pebble. I can give everybody everything that they want. So he's off to race home to show his parents and to surprise them with all the stuff that they could want. As he's coming home, he runs into a lion, a hungry lion. The lion is watching him and he turns himself into a, a rock. The lion thinks he's going crazy. His parents worry about him. And with this, um, Nighttime came, the stars came out, and his parents sat up all night worrying about him. The pastor was scared. He knew that he couldn't turn himself back because he couldn't touch the red pebble. His parents sat up all night worrying about him. They went out and they asked all the animals in the neighborhood if they'd seen him. They talked to the children, to the puppies, the kittens, the colts, the piglets. No one had seen Sylvester since the day before yesterday. They went to the police. The police couldn't help him either. All the dogs in Oaksdale went searching for him. They slipped behind every rock, tree, blade of grass, into every nook and gully in the neighborhood and beyond, but found not a scent of him. They sniffed the rock on Strawberry Hill, but it smelled like a rock. It didn't smell like Sylvester. After a month of searching the same places over and over and inquiring with the same animals over and over, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan no longer knew what to do. They concluded that some dreadful must have happened and they would probably never see their son again. But all the time was less than a mile away. They tried their best to be happy, to go about their visual, the usual ways. The usual ways include Sylvester and the Lord's reminded him. They were miserable. Life had no meaning for them anymore. Night followed day, day followed night, over and over again. Sylvester on the hill woke up less and less often. When he was awake, he was only hopeless and unhappy. He felt he would be a rock forever, and he tried, and he tried to get used to it. He went into an endless sleep. The days grew colder. The fall came with the leaves changing color, and the leaves fell, and the grass bent to the ground. Then it was winter. The wind blew this way and that way. The wolf sat on top of him and howled because he was hungry. When the snow melted, the earth warmed up, leaves on the trees began, the flowers showed the young faces. Mr. Duncan insisted that his wife and him go on a picnic. Let's cheer up. Let's try to live again and be happy, even though Sylvester, our angel, is no longer with us. He went to Strawberry Hill. Mr. Duncan sat on top of them. The warmth of his own mother sitting on him woke Sylvester. Mother, father, it's me, Sylvester, my dear. But he couldn't talk in her voice. He was so dumb. Mr. Duncan walked aimlessly around. While Mr. Duncan sat up, he found the little red pebble. They sat it on top of the rock and they were wishing how their son could be with them. And all of a sudden, Duncan appeared. I wish I were myself again. I wish I was my real self again. In less than an instant, he was. You can imagine the scene that unfolded. The embraces, the kisses, the questions, the answers, the loving looks, and the fond exclamation. 